What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out a new add-on that allows us to quickly create realistic wood textures inside a blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so Real Wood Textures is a new resource. I can't really call it an add-on because it's more of an asset library, but it's a new resource for creating realistic wood textures inside a blender. So Real Wood Textures comes from B Production. It's the same group that's brought us Forestation, the Vegetation add-on, um, Grass Blade, the Transport, out on we've talked about them on the channel before but this new resource is basically a large collection of assets that you can use in order to create realistic wood textures so I'll link to it in the notes down below there's two options there's an option for 4k and 2k as well as there's an option for ten dollars more to get the one with the 8k textures in there as well that's just kind of a question of what you value um, I don't do a lot with 8k personally but um, the difference of ten dollars there um, it really kind of makes sense to go with the 8k in my opinion but again that's up to you so you might try this real wood 25 I think this launch offer is still going for 25% off but basically what this is, this is a tool that contains um, wood veneers from 123 different species of trees. So this is specifically focused on wood textures. And so it's got all the different maps built in. So these are not like fully procedural. These are actually using PBR maps, which means it would be lighter on your computer than trying to do something with the actual procedural wood materials. So there's pluses and minuses to both of those. Um, from a performance standpoint, this should perform better than like a Sanctus library or something like that. Um, and again, they do have up to 8K textures. Now, one of the cool things about this, and we'll talk about this more in a minute, is they do have the option to adjust the finish on top of your wood as well. So you can have the raw wood, but then you can also have different finishes for like glossy or like oiled or waxed, allowing you to create a lot of different looks um, in your woods inside a blender. So these do work inside of the asset browser. Um, and I'll show you that in a second. And they've got a list of the wood materials down below. So you've got like American veneers, you've got European trees, you've got exotic trees. So a lot of different stuff to pick from if you're doing a lot with woods inside a blender. But let's go ahead and let's jump over into blender and take a look at how this works. So what you do is you just load the wood materials into the asset library. And once you do that, you have the ability to actually like drag these in here. And so let's say that we wanted to pick like the cedar material. All you do is you just drag it in and you've now got the cedar material on your object inside a blender. And so we'll just tab in here and we'll just do a smart UV project for right now. I'm gonna click on okay. So now it's all mapped in here. So now my material's set up and ready to go. But if you take a look at this, and I can't remember if I loaded in the 2K or the 4K, I think I loaded in the 2K just uh, from a file size standpoint, but you can see how this wood texture actually looks really good. It's very detailed. Um, and if we toggle over into rendered mode, you're gonna be able to see the reflections. You're gonna be able to see the bump maps and the ups and downs from the normal map. And um, just the texture overall just looks really good. Remember that there is an 8K option out there too that I'm not even using in the screen. All right, so let's take a look at this in the shader editor. So I'm just gonna jump into the shader editor right here. And specifically what we wanna focus on with these textures is um, the values in the real wood textures option right here. So you've got a number of different sliders in here. Most of them you're probably gonna be familiar with, but some of them are specific to this tool. So for example, they've got your normal and your bump maps in here, but what you can do is you can come in here and you can adjust the strength of those, right? So if I bring the strength of this up, notice how I'm getting more um, bumpiness showing up on my wood right here. But then if we go down below, we have options like adjusting the finishes. And again, I'm, I'm doing this in shaded mode just to kind of demonstrate this um, because my screen recorder seems to crash when I record things trying to render in cycles. But basically the way this works is you can click and drag these, right? And you can add like a varnish to the material. So notice how this is more reflective. You can also add that satin finish, um, which notice how that's not really, the, the varnish looks like it's more got a layer on top of everything, while the satin makes um, the actual wood grains look a little bit more reflective, but you've also got options in here for like the glossiness. Um, you've got the soft and the high options in there, as well as the options to make this look oiled or waxed. Right, so if you have the oiled in here, um, that floor isn't gonna be quite as shiny, and then the waxed um, is going to be an even more understated effect right there. All right, so if you take a look at this, each one of these has a different finish applied to it, right? So you've got, so you've got the varnish, the satin, the glossy soft, the oiled, and the waxed. Notice how you're getting a lot more reflection on the glossy 
than the other ones. Um, but like the oiled and the waxed, you're not really getting that same thing. Um, and I've also adjusted the normals on those up a little bit more so you get a little more bumpiness in here. So you can see how it is really easy with these sliders to achieve these different effects without having to do a whole bunch of extra work or anything like that. There's also an option in here to make this look like it's painted wood. So we've got this wood in here. Well, if we bring our paint factor up like this, right, then you can come in here and you can adjust the paint color. So if you want this to look like it's the wood texture, but the paint is actually a different color, right? You can come in here and you can adjust this like this. You can actually make this look like a painted wood, like a painted panel or something like that. And then if you wanted to toggle that back off, you just turn the paint factor back off. Um, and you don't need to be in the shader editor to do all this stuff, by the way. If you are working in just uh, your viewport right here, you can just toggle over here. And you can see how those are going to show up inside of your material properties on the right-hand side. And these are gonna show up for really any material that's in here. So let's say we wanted one of these more uh, exotic things like this uh, amaret. We just drag this in here. We'll notice how that's going to have those same options over here on the right hand side. So again, you've got these same options where you can make this look oiled, waxed, other things like that. You can also bring up the strength of the normal or the bump in here using these sliders as well. And so if you do want to improve the reflections that are in here that are on your wood material, you might want to toggle this anisotropic option up to one. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna give you better reflections on your material. So if you notice when I rotate around like this, um, those reflections are changing with the direction that we have in here. So that value is gonna improve the quality of the reflections, especially as you rotate around in your scene. So um, that one's definitely worth take, checking out. Um, I think you're taking a bit of a performance hit on that one, but I think the value that you get on this is worth it. Maybe I wouldn't put that on something that's going to act in the background of your rendering, but if it's something in the foreground, I think I would definitely try to toggle that on in order to get that better reflection result. All right, so that's where I'm going to end this video. This is probably the deepest library of just wood textures that I've seen. There are other add-ons where, where you get more overall textures, but um, they're definitely not as deep in the wood category. So if you need some of these like fancy woods or really realistic wood textures, this could be a great library for you. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.